Welcome back, everybody, to another Saturday morning cartoon show. Uh, and this is, for anyone who's not familiar with what we're doing, a Jump Rangers gameplay stream. Jump Rangers is a tabletop role-playing game. Oh, hang on. Hang on one sec. My mute button wasn't on on my on my Twitch, and I apologize to everybody for that. Jump Rangers is a tabletop role-playing game about kid space commandos fighting giant alien dinosaurs and giant alien robots and the other monsters and demons of the void uh, to give humanity a place among the stars. I am the creator of Jump Rangers and the developer of the tabletop role-playing game. And here with me, we have two other players playing characters. Ah, Killer Corpse is back. Hello. Welcome back. Um, would you like to tell us very briefly? What's that? Oh, nice. Nothing. I was talking to Katie. Sorry. No worries. Uh, please tell us a little bit about uh, your character and who you are. Me? Yes. Oh, hi. I'm Ippy Looney. I'm uh, Ippy Looney on all social media, which is I-P-I-L-U-N-I. I am playing Lyra, who is an autistic eight-year-old. Um, and she's in the Xenocore studying animals. Or aliens. I'm sorry. Um, and uh, she's from Armageddon, which is beautiful but dying. And uh, she carries around with her two pets, which is like my favorite part of the whole thing. So, <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about your pets. So I have a starlet named Bad. I call him Bad. But uh, he's a... Uh, and then I have a monk squirrel named Tuck, because he tucks in my pocket. <laughs> Perfect. And uh, would you please tell us a little bit about yourself and your character, Misha? Uh, hello. I am Misha. You can not follow me. And I'm kind of one of these people. <laughs> Uh, my character's name is Wizard, from who is part of the Psychor. You know, he does a bunch of psychic powers. In particular, this character focuses on kinesis, uh, telekinesis, electrokinesis, chirokinesis, and pyrokinesis right now. But his goal is to collect as many as are available in this game. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's it. And uh, just briefly, let me type out a comment. I can't seem to get onto the Twitch. Oh, there we go. Uh, if you go to twitch.tv backslash eight-sided films, you'll find it. Yeah, it's not showing the feed. Well, I'm looking at it right now, and we are definitely live. So that at least is handled. Uh, brief recap on the events of the last game. This is game two of the very first... Uh What's that? Nothing. OK. Gotcha. Um, this is game two of the very first adventure that I wrote for Jump Rangers, which is an adventure called First Contact, which is uh, in the eighth chapter of the core book. And um, in the last adventure, our heroes uh, met up with Commander Sudro Paxis of, of Paxis base on planet Link and were sent on a mission to deliver uh, some readings and, and scans of Saurian technology and Saurian power systems to his brother on planet Battleground, General Arden Paxis. And uh, once they snuck aboard in Saurian mothership in order to make their way to Battleground, the Saurian mothership took a detour they didn't expect and has landed on an alien planet. They don't know where they are just yet. Uh, they're still on board the Saurian mothership, and figuring out what's going on is going to be the stuff of this next adventure. Uh, does anybody have any questions or thoughts before we get started on, on what's going on? So we didn't have enough time to work on telepathy. Right? Right. Right. You, were, you started. You got, you've got about two more weeks of, of training left to do. 
So you can get back to it. You can coach Wizard up on his telepathy. Um, but you were interrupted in your in your studies. Okay. All right. Um, does anybody in the audience have any questions before we get started? And I'll give that just a quick second to filter down and see if anybody's got anything they want me to get into. Um, just so that everybody's aware, while I wait for that, the Jump Rangers core book, if you, if you pay on Patreon, people can play as Buster or something like that, right? That is correct. Um, anybody who is donating $10 a month or more is able to join us on stream and sign up uh, to play the character of Buster. Buster is a busted up, broken down robot with memory problems. And uh, <laughs> he's, he's a bucket of glitches. So um, there's a sign-up sheet that's available to patrons at the $10 level. And um, you can sign up for any week you like, as long as no one has signed up before you. And you can put yourself on standby for other weeks if, if and, you know, but we want to make sure that we give everybody a turn, basically, is what it comes down to. So right now, we don't have that many $10 donors. You can pretty much play Buster as much as you like as we bring more and more $10 donors onto the game. Um, at that point, we're going to have to make sure that, that people have the opportunity to sign up and play if they want to before somebody you know, gets two weeks in a row. So that's the deal with Buster. Um, and thank you for asking. Buster's good. Buster's good. Uh, the robot was built by uh, Uncle Slappy who is an ex-Jump Ranger in his 70s, who runs a, a diner and a bunkhouse for Jump Rangers at Paxis Base. And Uncle Slappy is not an engineer. <laughs> so Buster's got lots of fun tools and toys and things that he can pop out and lots of glitches that you can role play. And, uh, and the good news is that if Buster ends up being a little inconsistent because different people play him from week to week, that doesn't really hurt the character. <laughs> That's the idea. Um, so, when we last left our adventurers, uh, Lyra and Wizard and Buster were huddled, uh, waiting for the mothership to land on Planet Battleground over by the trash systems. And uh, the mothership was in space for about two weeks less than you anticipated. So it's bashed its way through the atmosphere of an unknown planet and has settled over over that uh, over that planet's surface and you guys have no idea where you are so how are you going to try and get off this mothership um i can't hear me can we find a computer that can access. Uh, you're going to go have to go and look for it. Okay. So um, that is, are you going to, do you have any particular ideas about how you want to undertake this search, first of all? Do you have a particular uh, strategy uh, for looking for this computer? Well, if we follow Conduit, if we follow Conduit, we follow should run wires. into something, right? All right. Let's follow the wires. All right. And Lyra, this is something you're doing? Uh, actually, I think I'll send Tuck. <laughs> <laughs> he'll, he'll come back if there is something for us to do. To, to, okay. to get, does that make sense? Like, he's going to go make sure that there's a computer. Okay. All right. So, uh, what's Tuck's mind? Crazy. Um... <laughs> How many mind dice does Tuck have? Two. Two dice in mind. Two. No, three. Sorry. Three dice. Tuck has no, three dice in mind? Two, right? <laughs> <laughs> I... I'm just looking. Yeah, I don't actually no we didn't okay go so if you want to go over that and tell me that would be helpful okay yes let me pull up tuck is what kind of animal a monk squirrel all righty hang tight one sec so all of our animals are in or that's not true a great many of our animals in this game are in 
a supplement, the most recent supplement to Jump Rangers called Critters of the Galaxy. Um, there's all kinds of good stuff in that supplement, apart from the animals, and monk squirrels are one of them. Monk squirrels are basically uh, a little tiny squirrel-sized monkey with a big fluffy tail, little hands. They are adorable. Tuck has a mind of one. Um, and I'm going to give him a target of two. Wow. That's not very big. Nope. <laughs> this, is not a, this is not a good task for Tuck. Why but, isn't it? Would it be better for, would it be better for uh, Bad Bad? These animals have pretty limited abilities. But so you're leaning. I have them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Look, I got a one. On Tuck's roll? Yeah. Roll it again. I got five. Okay. So Tuck crawls around behind the wall and does find a conduit for you to follow. You don't know exactly where it goes. You don't know exactly what's going to happen. What's your mind? Seven. Seven. Okay. I want you to roll seven dice. You have um, common knowledge, basic training. I will give you Tuck's victory. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you have an automatic victory on this roll. You have alien starships. Is that right? Alien starships. I have... Three. Danger sense, sneaking, smart, autistic, observant. Observant is four, um, smart is five, and sneaking is six. So roll seven dice into a target and of six. Stealth? Yes. Your target is seven. They're all under seven. Oh, wow. Okay, good. So the two of you crawl your way behind the walls of the alien mothership, staying hidden from any potential threats, and you splice your uh, data pad into the computer systems of the Saurian mothership. And you are now on a planet called Rock. You've come here because... The Rexors that run this mothership have been ordered by their by their house to um, to come here and explore the potential of strip mining this world, thanks to a, a report that was sent them from Undersource Scouts a couple of weeks ago. Those scouts have been exploring this planet and starting the process of um, prospecting it while the mothership comes. Um, it is very important to the Rexor on this ship that their plans remain a secret because um, the Octonium readings that the Undersore Scouts picked up were extraordinary. There's Octonium radiation coming from this planet that nobody's ever seen before and, and many different kinds of it. So um, until they can figure out what's going on and until they can figure out how to exploit it and until they can figure out how to use that Octonium to make their house the dominant house on Soros. They don't want any other Saurians finding out what's going on here. So they're fighting their own kind? Yep. That's business. That's right. So they're keeping a big secret. And uh, so what's happening on this planet must be pretty important. And it must be, uh, it must be the kind of secret that can change the way things work on Soros. We're getting all that information on our data decks? Yep, you're getting all that stuff on your data deck uh, because you've hacked into the Saurian mainframe. (laughs) (laughs) The report report, um, from the Undersore scouts says that they have encountered some resistance from local life forms, but they've managed to keep it under control. What's the local life form? There's no information about that just yet. Uh, I, I think, Wizard, we should help the people that are here. 
Sure. Let's, go, let's get some local life on. Because I know what's here, right? Because I study, I study uh, aliens and I'm into animals, right? Well, you do study aliens and you are into animals, but this is an undiscovered planet. These undersore scouts are the first alien or the first beings to ever land. Oh wow, Killer Corpse is now a ten dollar patron. Welcome. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, I will <laughs> I will very gladly uh, issue you your your membership rewards as soon as we wrap this stream up. Thank you for joining us. And if you'd like to join us as Buster next week, you might as well let me know right now. We'll make sure I get you on the sign on the sheet. Outstanding. Thank you. Yay! So, <laughs> that's exciting. Thanks, Ty! Excellent. Well, that feels good. Thank you very much. That's, so... That's Katie's boy. Got it. Got it. Well, thank you very much. And his name's Ty? Ty. T-Y. 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 Got it. Do you prefer to be called Ty or Killer Corpse on screen? Be joining next week. We'll be looking forward to it. That's awesome. Perfect. So, I have bad memory, so Buster is great, and you can say Ty. Perfect. Good to meet you, Ty, and thank you very much for joining. Um, excellent. So the two of you are going to see about sneaking off this planet. Now, you don't know anything about this world because nobody knows anything about this world. Right now, the information you have from the Undersore Scouts is, uh, is everything that's known off this planet. It's never been explored. So there's no way for you to know anything. But um, there's a couple things you do know. You do know that there's a radiation hazard here because of all the octonium radiation. And you know that whatever's going on on this planet is something that's so important to the Saurian horde that this house is going to try and conquer this whole planet by themselves with this one mothership because they, they, don't, they don't want anybody else getting their hands on what's going on here. So something extraordinary is afoot. And you also know that um, there's, there's three rectors on this spaceship. There's two warlords and a tyrant who are in charge of mining the uh, the establishment. <laughs> and mining is what they're going to be doing here. Okay. The other thing that you would know automatically is that because this mothership is the first, you know, proper Saurian presence on this planet, there's not going to be an air can for you to sneak out of because there's no spaceport. Right. So you're going to have to find another way off the spaceship. Um, all right. So where's their garbage? Their garbage? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the garbage uh, is right here. They're probably... It, mm -hmm. It'd be easiest because they're... Because they... Don't they don't... Don't they usually, when they get there, just dump their garbage off? Uh, they dump their garbage off in space before they land. Oh. Because if they dump the garbage right now, that pile of garbage is going to be sitting right next to the rest of their brand new camp, which is not something they want. So the garbage has already been dumped. All right, wizard, what, what do you think? I want to explore. I want to see what's here because... I've never been here, or never heard of it, even. Hmm. I don't know enough about ships to know how to get off them. Um. Well, it, well, we know that they're going to have to unload it. munitions and stuff like that. Like we All kinds of mining equipment, all kinds of... Hmm. Yeah, well, we they're going to unload... But they're mining, right? Yep. Anyway, they're going to they're gonna have to unload all their equipment and whatnot, so why don't we just go where that is and 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 get off this ship on their stuff in their box. stuff? <laughs> That's you're gonna exactly go. What I'm <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna go find a mining crate and sneak into it. Yep. Okay. 
Alrighty. My Twitch went down for just a sec. I'm going to make sure that everything's working, and it is. Perfect. So, uh, this is going to be a couple of steps getting there. First and foremost, uh, please, both of you, roll whatever you would roll for stealth. You, you know where you're going, so this isn't a mind roll, this is a body roll. How many dice do you both have for body? Two, Two dice. Finding it. Okay. Three. Two dice and three dice. Common knowledge and basic training. Ippy Looney, your stealth and your sneak. Sneaking. Mm hmm. Observant. Okay, that's five. Autistic. Nah. Mm, nope. No quick? Nope. Three dice into a target of five. And Misha, what does Wizard have to help you with this? Hey, I'm not done yet. Oh, you're not? <laughs> what else you got? Dangerous sense. Yep, I'll give that to you. That's six. So, so common knowledge, basic training, dangerous sense, sneaking, stealth, observant. Yes. Smart. Target of six. That's seven, honey. I know, but smart doesn't count. Ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're all under six, so. Okay, great. Wizard. I what have you got? Observant. That's one. Common knowledge basic training is three. Uh, danger sense. Four. Parsing? You... No. One of his kidneys. Uh, okay. All right. I'll give that to you. You could try that, that one that you're trying to get. Quick thinking? Yeah. Uh, this isn't really a quick thinking thing. This is a patient... Oh. Take your time. Don't try and rush it kind of thing. Um, oh. Well, I'm horrible at this. <laughs> Alright, so what you've is, got... You you're rolling... Electrokinesis to turn out lights as we go along. Well, you're behind the walls. Oh. So the main thing is to, is to not make any noise and make sure that you don't attract attention what, to yourselves as you physically <laughs> climb through the ship. But wouldn't he, know, wouldn't he be able to use his electrokinesis to like make sure we're following the right wire hmm. you know where you're going <laughs> you've got a target of what was it four target of five. five okay roll two dice to a target of five <laughs> one victory one victory all right I would like you, Misha, please, to roll me 1d8. Four. Four. All right. Roll one more d8, please. Five. Five. All right. Give me one quick sec here. Pull up my numbers. So you guys are crawling your way through the innards of the ship. You're mostly using the air vents, uh, which are loaded with all kinds of conduit and other, other, other gack and stuff. And uh, <laughs> as you crawl your way along, um, there's sort of two kinds of corridors in this ship. There's the big cylindrical corridors that the Rexors run through, and then there's the access corridors, which the Undersaurs run through. You're crawling through an air vent along the top of an access corridor. And Lyra doesn't seem to have any trouble. Misha, you are crawling right along, and you tap one of the grates um, of the air vent right as a crew of undersore technicians walk right underneath you. One of them looks up and sees your foot. And you hear them, literally, there's five of them. They stop right where they are. And they start looking around, <laughs> sniffing the air. They're going to see if they can't figure out what's going on with you guys. Okay. So this is a mind roll. But they're dumb. <laughs> <laughs> you want to roll? Let's roll? Let's roll initiative for starters. You guys can either use your mind or you can use your spirit to roll initiative. 
And it, and it goes into a target of four. Okay. Five victories. Five victories. Six, six, six victories. Six victories. All right, Lyra, you're going first, and Wizard, you're going second. Hmm. Lyra, what would you like to do about the situation? I want to throw something down the thing further so that they follow it. <laughs> Are you throwing it in the direction you're traveling or behind you? Uh, behind us. Okay. <laughs> All right. What are you going to throw? Um, you're in an air vent, so there's not a lot of like found objects in here. Uh, I, I will throw. Yeah, like a, a, I don't know, a food tin. Um, star, my star lot. I don't know. Your star. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, are you gonna send? Are you gonna send? Are you gonna send your squirrel? Your your monk squirrel? Ooh, I could do that. I could do that. He and because he can come back to me. Yes. I'm gonna do that. Well, I'm not gonna throw him. I'm gonna. Send him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, you get to roll roll to distract them with your monk squirrel. Is basically what I'm gonna say. It's a it's to to ask your monk squirrel to do this is going to be a heart roll because it's a social roll. Okay. And then after you know after your success or failure in actually confusing them, I'm going to say the rest of these rolls are going to be up to your your monk. You know what I mean? Your, yeah. your poor little your poor little guys on their own at that point. <laughs> four. Four. Okay. Uh, common knowledge, basic training. Do you have animal something? Um. Yes, I have animals. Telepathy. Four. Which is strongest with animals? Yep. Um. I have dangerous sense, basic training, common knowledge, autistic, and observant. I'm gonna say it's a target of four. Go for That's it. Gonna that's what I said. You're right. Ooh. Okay. All right. Let's see how these undersores are doing. Four. Out of, four out of three dice. Excellent. Well done. All right. So let's see if you can trick them. One, two, three. All right, they have a target of three. Oh my gosh. And they botch completely. It's terrible. I got two eights. <laughs> <laughs> so your monk squirrel looks at you and goes, chick, 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 and then scampers down the corridor. Tap, 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 tap. And, you know, down below, the undersore technician in charge of the other ones goes, Rawr! and stomps down the corridor after them, looking for the monk squirrel. The monk squirrel, chick, 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 starts crawling around and all this stuff. And leads the undersores on a wild goose chase. Now we're just gonna make sure that your under that your that your monk squirrel can get away safely before they get stopped. One, two, two victories, and a one, three victories, four victories for your monk squirrel, and the undersore exterm and the undersore technicians, these are technicians, mind you are do 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 wow two ones and two eights that's uncanny well <laughs> um your monk squirrel runs circles around the undersore technicians leads them off and then sneaks back into your pocket very quietly and safely and the two of you continue your journey down towards the massive, massive cargo bay. Now, they have massive sort of hover sleds carrying equipment from the mothership's cargo bays down to the planet's surface. There's 
tons of exactly the kinds of crates you guys were looking for. They're all empty because there's no ore yet. Um, there's huge trains with train cars, hover trains that are going to be used to shuttle undersores and um, and uh, you know miners and mining gear and mining ore all around the planet's surface. There's undersore technicians just like the ones you just encountered working all over the place. And all this stuff is being loaded onto... There's mining equipment, as you can well imagine, uh, as well as extermination teams and defense equipment and habitats and, and you know gear for building construction equipment for, for okay. the spaceport to come. All of it being loaded onto these sleds and dropped down to the planet's surface. It's a giant mess down there. It's chaos in the cargo bay. There's undersores working everywhere. Great. Well, is there is there one that's closest to us? What's what's what is the one that's closest to us? Right now, a lot of that mining equipment and um and whatnot is being loaded into the cargo containers of the trains. So you guys can sneak onto a hover train, but there are two undersore technicians right now loading all the stuff that they're going to need down on the surface on that train. So you're going to have to sneak past them. There's a great in between you and the, and the, there's an air vent in between you and the cargo bay as well. So you're going to have to remove the cargo vents, the air bay, the cargo vent into the air bay, and then sneak past the undersore technicians to get into the, to get into the. Small compared to them. So wouldn't it be. Well, the undersores are sort of like, I mean, you're, you're kid sized and undersores are sort of the size of professional wrestlers. (laughs) <laughs> so you're not tiny. You're not unnoticeable. Right, right. Most... Okay, never mind. Um, is there a equipment nearby we can sabotage? Like a hover trolley or something that I can make collapse so they have to deal with it. Good thing. Hey, Kyle, yes. I Star Tours. <laughs> Is that a Star Tours thing? Yeah, remember when the Star Stormtroopers and the, the luggage all falls over? That's true. <laughs> that is true. All right. So, yes, there's all kinds of, of mining equipment getting stacked off to the side. If it were to fall over, the other store technicians would have to deal with it. Okay. Let's knock some of it over with my telekinesis. Okay. All right. Roll for it. What do you got? You got this is a this is a spirit roll, as you know. And just to recap how these rolls work for anybody who's watching who might not have this information, every single roll comes down to a die pool and a target number. The die pool is which strength you're using, whether that strength is your body, your mind, your spirit or your heart. Your heart is all your social roles. And then, to calculate the target number, you add up all the things that your character's good at that they know how to do, or that they intrinsically have as a virtue um, that might help with that role, and you want to roll at that number or under. So virtues and training are things that you have that your character either innately is, or that they've picked up along the way to help them with this. That's what Mikhail and I are doing right now. All of his spirit rolls are how he does all of his psychic abilities. And you have how many dice in spirit? Seven. Seven dice. So now we're going to just... What's that? I'm going to build a new virtue. What virtue are you going to go for? Misdirection. I'm going to call that training. But... Maybe the training. You're calling it what? <laughs> <laughs> no, you seriously, to... I didn't see you. A it's a training. Oh, a training? Yeah, misdirection is a skill that you would have and not a thing that you are. I guess so. What's the thing that you would uh, that you are that would that would fulfill that? Um... So I can't so I can get new trainings though, right? Yeah, you just have to learn them from people who already have them. Okay. Um, you 
you want to go for tricky? Yeah, well, I, my, the word that was coming to mind is magic. So tricky. Oh. Like... You could cut out for a second. I didn't catch everything. I didn't say anything. Oh, okay. <laughs> so tricky works? Tricky, tricky works. Does tricky okay. work? Tricky works, right? Like, that's yes. what I'm... I'm thinking... Yeah, like, um... Well, like, rogue skills. Yeah, tricky. Okay. Okay, so anytime you think you're going to do something that proves that you're tricky... Uh -huh. Let me know, and we'll, we need three in a row. How the, so there's, there's three different kinds of character advancement. Training, you just learn through role-playing. It takes time. You have to take time away from the story. Um, at the end of every big adventure, at the end of every opera, you get one more die to put into strengths. That's how you get those. So that's the closest we come to experience points in Jump Rangers. Um, and then with virtues, you just have to prove that you are the thing that you want to get credit for being. And the way that you prove it is what Evan's doing right now is that you bet me, the GM, that you are that way. So she's saying, I'm tricky, I'm going to prove it. She's going to pick three roles over the course of the game that prove that she's tricky. And if she makes all three roles in a row without, um, without, without missing one, then she gets to use tricky as a virtue in future roles. If she doesn't, she never gets to try and pick up tricky again. So that's how this works. Um, so let me know when you're being tricky. And Mikhail, you're rolling seven dice. You've got common knowledge, basic training, telekinesis. That's three. Mind over matter. That's four. Uh, what else? Do you uh, observant, psychic. Psychic. That's five. Observant. I'm not counting for this roll. Anything else? Um, five. And then I'll throw my quick thinking in for a chance. Yep, I'll, I'll give you quick thinking. Okay. All right, roll your spirit. Target of five. Six. Excellent. You knock over... Uh, the pile of mining equipment, it all hits the ground. There's mining lasers sprawling everywhere. And the two undersore technicians shout in Saurian and start charging to clean up the mess. Well, they should be clear, all right, you guys pop the, the hatch off. Give me a sneak roll to see if you can get into the, into the cargo bay unseen. Um... One victory, and you're going to add the six victories from your previous roll to that, because this is technically a, a, a critical success kind of situation where you get to compound your victories. So for anybody who's watching, doesn't know exactly what just happened, um, this game likes to encourage min-maxing through role play and problem solving. So if you take an action that aids and abets the next action, you can add those victories together. If you can break something down into smaller steps, you can compound the success, is, is what I'm saying here. And sneaking aboard this, this hover train is what these jump rangers are trying to do. This whole thing with knocking over the, over the uh, mining lasers is to make that happen. So, seven victories. And how'd you do? Six. Six victories. All right. And I am going to roll for the undersores. Who botch? <laughs> okay, so you guys pop the thing right off. You run across the short distance into the hover train. You find yourself a nice little sweet dark hiding spot behind some mining equipment. And you lie in wait as the hover train is packed and then loaded onto a massive hover sled lowered down to the planet's surface, and then moved off to the side. And eventually, you can tell that you're alone because all the humming from the repulsor pads and all the action and activity is, you know, is, is stopped in your immediate vicinity, and it's all sort of coming from a consistent 
safe distance away. And uh, with that, you you let yourself out of the of the hover train, and you guys are basically now in just a a storage area that's been like just a bunch of old mining equipment that's been thrown in, into into the side. You can sneak around. You can get a lay of the land. You can see the massive hover ship hovering above. You can see all the understores working way, way off um, on the outskirts of this encampment. You can see the undersource scout ship, a Wyvern class scout ship um, with a small sort of temporary habitat, scout habitat, where the undersource scouts live and work and they're lounging with their rifles and their, there's only, there's only eight of them lounging with their rifles and their equipment, watching the watching the to-do of the mothership unpacking, exchanging words with the Saurian, uh, the Rexor tyrant, who's gathering information, gathering their reports and such. Um, one thing to note is that the Wyvern scout ship, um, as near as you can tell, has its own jump drive. So it is a spaceship with a jump drive that's not a mothership. It's small enough for a person to fly. Do you know how to fly? I... It's got alien starships. I have starships. <laughs> <laughs> Neither of you are fantastic pilots. It could be I a comedy of errors. But I have starships. Hmm. So we have a way out. We do. But don't do you want to explore the I think we have oh. a pressing mission to deliver our little data pad. Right, but I feel that getting on a ship and flying off with it not hmm. just I'm gonna face it. Hmm. But you have your you have like one of your kinesis can talk to, to to technology, right? What? You have techno kinesis? I don't have that one. Oh, what? Everyone I need you to have, you don't have. That was the other one. <laughs> <laughs> I got the physical abilities. Oh, okay. Um, um, hmm. Well, we can't get the ship. It will be shot at. Um. Okay, so I could probably figure out how to fly this thing hmm. but it, it it depends on what what role i would have to use uh it's going to be uh to actually fly it it's going to be a body roll to make the jump across the stars it's going to be a mind roll but deep space navigation is a really tricky thing, and it's not something you've ever attempted before. In fact, uh, very few ha humans ever have, and, and never with any resounding success. So, not something to take on lightly, ooh, that's for sure. Ooh. Why don't we change the plans on their little thing that they gotta go some They gotta go to... Where did we have to go? Um, what was in. it called? Tenny, what was the name of the planet called? Yes. You're going to planet Battleground. Battleground. Right. So why don't we change their their rule or their orders on the on the ship? Like I have ways to work with that, right? So I can change their orders instead of going to the dark side of the moon. We can go to Battleground. 
you're going to try and send them off the planet and onto battleground, basically, get them to reroute themselves from here. Yes, a reroute. That's that's the word tricky. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be very very tricky, only because the the Rexors on this ship are very very well aware of the riches that are on this planet. Hmm. So you can try and send them conflicting orders, but they're unlikely to be deterred. In all likelihood, they're going to stay here and, and finish what they started. You're going to have to do something very, very convincing for that. Because these guys, these guys want to be rich and famous. And this is going to make them rich and famous. Going to Battleground was what the ship used to do. This is what the ship is doing now. There's a reason for that. So just be advised. Okay. Uh, what other route does it look like is available here? Right now, they're not leaving. They're unpacking an entire mothership onto the planet's surface. They're starting the process of building an outpost. So these these um, undersaurs and the three rexors that command them are are clearly planning on on being here for a while. They're building a secret outpost that they don't want anyone to know about until they can mine enough of this planet's riches that no one can stop them. Where Unless they sent the signals saying that they were there. And then they have to go to battle to get back up. <laughs> <laughs> well, what? Blow their cover. Yeah. So you're going to try and send a signal to the rest of the Saurian horde? That the, the, the riches of this planet are here. But what about the native population? Yeah, I mean, that would... That, that, yeah, yeah, the amount of Saurians on this planet would go up exponentially if, if you succeeded in that plan. Um, so we're in a train. Has it moved? As the uh, no, the train is stopped right now. They're just unpacking everything and getting everything settled. So you're you're probably safe for a couple of hours. They don't have time to deal with what's going on with the train right now. They're they're literally they're literally getting everything off the spaceship, and it's going to take a long time. Okay. So you're safe for a minute. The train's off the spaceship. Yep. Okay. Yep, and it's sort of it's you know they're 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 packing trains just like it all around you. There's about you know ten of them here now, yeah. and and they're unpacking mining equipment. They're they're going to unload what they packed into the train pretty soon. But right now the 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 job is just to get everything off the spaceship and onto the planet's surface. Oh. Just to give you a sense of 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 how big that job is. Um, Looking around, you can see, you know, there's, there's, uh, you know, about at least, at least, you know, 50 technicians or so working at any time. There's the eight understore scouts milling off to the corner. There's whole extermination teams that are starting to set up um, little operation centers, basically the, the, the understore equivalent of tents all around the campsite. There's undersore guards um, working with miners and laborers to erect, uh, start erecting a wall around their campsite. Miners are preparing their gear in teams of 12 and 8 all over the place. Um, so it sounds like and, the goal here is total annihilation of these lizards. So <laughs> an army. You're going to need help for that, for sure. And up above, you can see that Dragon Starfighters are starting to fly scouting missions one at a time. Okay. But, but there's, there's patrols already underway in the we skies. Need up. Some help. We need an army. Why don't we go try to find the people that they're fighting? That works. That should be probably the first step. I think that I think that's what we have to do. We have to like find the native population and figure out. So we gotta get out of here. Yeah, and maybe they can help us get out. 
Okay. So you guys are going to sneak away from the, the Saurian base? Yes. All right. That's not going to be too hard, but I want both of you to make me rolls just to, just to be on the safe side. It's the same sneak roll that you had before. Plus so you're trying to... Okay, tricky. That works. <laughs> it's a body roll. That's one thing to yeah. um, Body? Yep. One victory is enough. Okay. Nobody's paying attention to you. Uh, three victories. Three victories. That's your first tricky. So. I guess it would help uh, if I was rolling a d10. 10? Wait. <laughs> so It'll make it easier for you. Yeah. I got a one. Okay. Oh, good. <laughs> I'm still at I'm still at three. Okay. So, uh, you know, you wait until the the undersaur um, starfighter patrol is passed by overhead. You run, and it's a rocky planet. There's no vegetation growing here. Um, there's there's mountains and mesas all around. Um, so you run for a rocky outcropping, and you make it safely, and you start heading off into the open, dry wastes of planet rock. And <laughs> just grumpy. He said he hates it. <laughs> um, you guys are going to have water mined from the planet's atmosphere and food in your food packs. It's slimy and gross, but it is better than starvation. Um, what I need from you right now is for one of you to roll one die. Go for it, McKay. And That's an eight. That's an eight. Um, okay. So you're going to roll one more die. Okay. Tell me what you get. That's a seven. That's a seven. Five, six, seven. All <laughs> right. <laughs> Hang tight. Two, one, two, three, four. All right. All right. So I want both of you to roll your body target of four. This is what's called an endurance check. Both of you are taking four points of damage from radiation right now. I got one. So, so you get three points. Three points. And you, did you see where it says damage on your character sheet? No. Okay. Oh, okay. So mark down that you have three points of damage. Why? Okay. Because you just walked into a radiation zone. Okay, but if I'm rolling a one and then I roll again, then then I'm getting more damage? Less. No, no, no. The damage is already rolled. So now you're absorbing the damage. You're soaking. You're tanking your damage with your body. You follow me? No. Okay, so here's how damage works. If you look at the character sheet, you'll notice that there's boxes above your attributes, above your uh, above your strengths, right? That's okay. Not I don't understand how you're getting to the number that I have to write down. I rolled damage on the radiation already, so you're both taking four points of damage. What you're going to do is roll your body to see how much your body absorbs and how much of that damage you actually take. You always get a chance to lessen the damage that's coming in unless you're dealing with uh, a specific kind of damage that doesn't allow you to. Okay, so if I got four... You follow me? If you've got four victories on your body roll, then you're fine. Okay. That's what I was trying to figure out. Because okay. I had to roll a four or I was taking damage and I... And I, got, I had ones, which was making me roll more. And I'm like, this doesn't make sense. So now it makes sense. Thanks. You're welcome. How many, how many victories did you roll on your body roll? Four. Okay. So you are fine. Um, wizard, on the other hand, is not. And floating up behind you, um, Buster is going to apply one of the med packs that Buster has. So... 
<laughs> Fortunately, um, Buster's Med Pack is effective. You get your three points of damage back, but it hurt like hell, and you can't afford to just be wandering around in the wilderness like this. You're going to have to find a way around the radiation patches. Well, it depends. I would I would allow danger sense. I would allow um, electrokinesis, so you can just try to navigate it. I have with the power of your mind. Yeah, danger danger sense. Aliens? No, danger sense sneaking stuff. Aliens. Yes, I could autistic. do. I think autistic and observant are important. Um, I'll give you that. I think I'll probably go with electrokinesis and then danger sense, science, mind over matter, psychic. Psychic more. Five. Kinesis, yep, and then smart. common knowledge and basic training. Yeah. So that's a target of seven. For what? For for walking walking forward without walking through a radiation zone. I'm using my powers. Mind, heart, body. It's a spirit roll. For me too. Uh, it, unless you just want to follow wizard. Um, sure. Yeah. Six victories and I think. All right, so you got five victories, which in this case is going to be plenty. Okay. So, back on your feet, helped out by Buster, um, who who you know floats over you and says, "Are you feeling okay, Sam?" No. Don't stab me, though. Mm. Don't stab me. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's no other way for me to administer my emergency med pack reserves. I heard that there was a thing called spray, med sprays, pain relievers. Don't be grumpy, Sam. <laughs> 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 And with uh, with your your floating buster bot traveling behind you, the three of you make your way across the waste and uh, around the face cliff, putting a mountain in between you and the Saurian encampment. Sweet. And as you make your way, yes, as you make your way to safety, um, I want. Now nah, I'm just going to give it this one to you because I don't want you to miss it. You're gonna you're gonna see, um, sort of an anomaly in the ruins up ahead. You spot a very um, simple and at the same time very clearly uh, artificial set of stairs leading to some kind of entryway into a cavern. The stairs are All right. ornate. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Sorry about that. Um, I think I'm just trying to choose my words carefully. Yeah, Evan, Evan does not like it when I start slowing my speech into sound bites. It drives her crazy. So the, the stairs are basically painted with minerals. And in particular, there's all kinds of copper minerals here. There's beautiful turquoise, there's blues, and they swirl together and even create glyphs and writing. And as the stairs arise, there's some, there's not exactly railings or anything like that, but there's walls on either side of the stairs that have ornate carvings throughout them and they lead into into some kind of cavern there's also very easily seen some blast areas uh, and chunks blown out of both of the stairs and the and the opening so there's been some there's been some combat here nothing to do but go inside oh, all right oh the stairs yeah okay <laughs> Your danger sense is not is not active right now, and you're 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 spotting as you start working your way up. The stairs are pretty big. There's there's probably a hundred of them. Oh, 
So it's not a small thing. Um, as you work your way up, you're picking from inside this cavern some un because you've already got your your radiation sense up. You're picking some unbelievable radiation readings up from inside here. It's not dangerous and it's not going to kill you, but very clearly this is what the Saurians are after. Um, and as you step through the opening, you walk into a massive domed room about three stories tall with rubble everywhere. There was a battle here to be sure. And um, is, there's... Is there, there are four Saurians down on the floor underneath the whole bunch of rubble? <laughs> <laughs> uh, those, those Saurians are not there uh, oh. because this is, this is a, a new timeline. We've rebooted the game. <laughs> Um, but as you look around and you see the blast areas, you do notice very clearly that these are disruptor blasts. So this is probably uh, the work of the Saurian scouts that you saw when you came in. That's pretty easy to deduce since you, since you mentioned it. Um, there are, there's rubble all over the ground. There's glittering little bits of octonium spread throughout that rubble in various colors. Um, and you've never seen colored octonium before. Octonium's always glowing blue, and there's blue octonium here, but there's also purple and red and green and all the colors of the rainbow. And uh, looking around, you see on top of the dome that's colored and carved in all the ways that I'm describing, each story, which is a good bit taller than it would be if it was built for people, um, has... Uh, a balcony that rings around the structure as well as stairs that go up. And along that balcony, there are sort of alcoves with different kinds of octonium radiation, different kinds of even visible glow coming from each of these alcoves. And as you look around on the ground floor, you can see pretty clearly that just like the minerals have been pushed, if you will, painted and moved to create this cavern. This cavern was not carved. It was grown. And just like the minerals have been pushed and grown, the octonium crystals themselves have been pushed and grown to create lattice works, little sort of radiation saunas off to the sides of, of this cavern. And that is the structure that you're dealing with. It's unlike anything you've ever seen. Yeah. And, and there's broken rocks all over the floor and little tiny chips of octonium laced throughout the rocks. Do our octonators react to these uh, crystals and all? Good question. Not that you can tell. Roll, roll, um, somebody want to make a science roll? Does somebody want to? Make that science mess around. All right. What's your mind? Six. Six. Science, common knowledge, basic training, that's three. What, am I what else you got? You're trying to figure out kind of how this, these octonium crystals would interact with technology, right? Hmm. Is, your, is your basic question? Okay. Um, science, knowledge. Observant, smart. Uh, or five. Yep. Electrophonesis. Use its test to uh, if there's any interactivity between crystals yep. and I'll give that to you. Alright. So roll roll uh your roll your mind into a target of six. Uh one victory. Hmm. It's 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 pretty safe bet that this octonium has technological applications because the undersores are pretty serious about mining it. So, you know, <laughs> this this undersore house, this this Saurian house, is basing their entire future on what they can find and strip mine from this planet. So, you know, you know you're on the right track. You can't get much more than that. Oops. Um, Which is probably good. What's that? 
Hey, the little sauna rooms. Is there a room that we can go in without dying? Uh, the radiation in there isn't actually going to kill you. It's not a lethal form of radiation. Oh. It's not dangerous to you. It's just something to be aware of. It's it's an observation that you're making. Okay. Um. Yes. There's other kinds of lethal radiation on this planet, but that is not that is not dangerous to you. I guess we just go deeper. I want to know who built this place. <clears throat> well, you start looking around for evidence in terms of who might have built this place. Um, and okay, so make me make me an. Make me a, a, a science roll of your own there, Lyra. Me? Yep. Um, smart? Yep. Autistic? Yep. Observant? Yes. Comment, basic training? Yep, Eight. that's five. Yep. Danger sense? Nope. Animals. Nope. Target of six. Roll your mind into a target of six. Nope. Three victories? Hold on. Or five victories. Okay. I haven't done any yet. Okay. Eight. Woo! Nine. One. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, think I got five ones. Wow. wow. I've unmocked the world. Wait, I gotta roll them again. So that was six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> All right. So. Wizard, you start looking around for other places to explore, and, and suddenly you see Lyra completely transfixed with one of the little octonium chips. It's a little red octonium chip sitting there on the ground. And Lyra, what you noticed is that this little piece, this little, sh it's like a pebble sized piece of octonium, was ever so slowly and ever so gently dragging itself across the ground. And it seems to be picking up some minerals with it as it does so. But it's too small and too light, and it's whatever is drawing it towards whatever else it's attracted to isn't quite strong enough to get it moving, and it's just having a little bit of trouble. You give it a little itty-bitty poke, and you kind of help it start to roll itself. And as it rolls across the ground, it starts to build up a little ball of dust and debris around it until finally it's even enough and round enough that it actually starts rolling around on its own accord. It starts bumping around the room and it starts rolling around and then it picks up a little orange octonium chip and then it picks up a little yellow octonium chip. Now it's maybe the size of um, like a like a volleyball. And it kind of scoots off across the ground, and it rolls over a green octonium chip, and then it kind of rolls around the room. Now it's the size of a beach ball, like a small beach ball. It just rolls right out the door and down the steps. I'm following it. Okay. <laughs> Are you sticking with your teammate, wizard? Might as well. Okay. So this ball of rock sort of works its way across the massive plains, the desert plains of planet rock. And, and as it rolls, it sort of smashes the larger chunks of rock that it's accumulated and becomes more round and more perfect as it goes. Um, and it's just going. It's like drawn by a magnet or something. You can't tell exactly what's going on, but off it goes. And uh, you guys are going to have to milk body checks. Now, if Buster hadn't been there to help you with the med pack 
And if you hadn't had a med pack of your own, what would have happened with the damage wizard is that it would hamper you from it basically subtracts dice from your strengths. Mm. So if you look at the character sheet, there's a row of damage boxes over the rows of strengths that you have, which are body, mind, heart, and spirit. And the first box is a freebie. The first box of damage doesn't do anything. The second box is over your first die in every single strength. So you don't get to roll any die that has a damage checkbox over it. You see what I'm saying? So if you have if you have two dice in body and one and 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 two points of damage, the first point of damage is a freebie, the second one reduces all of your strengths by one and now you only have one die in body. That's how that works. Um if you are ever asked to make a roll for which you don't have any dice because of damage, that's when you fall unconscious. Hmm. I... So you can keep yourself conscious. So that's that's the deal. If you have, if you had, if you were gonna, you know, you were you were gonna take some damage. If you had three dice of damage and two dice in body, and I ask you to make a body check, or you do something that requires a body check, you just knocked yourself out. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's how that works. I want both of you to make body rolls. This is an endurance roll. You're out on the deserts. You're drinking plenty of water, but it's still a long, hard walk across the surface of planet rock. Hmm. Can I use my hyrokinesis to make it cooler around me? <laughs> sure. I'll let you add. I'll just let you add cryokinesis to the roll. So that's another. That's another. You see what I'm saying? So. Um. How many? What? What you? What do you guys have that are going? That's going to help you. Danger sense, basic training, common knowledge, observant, autistic, and quick. I think your target is two, Lyra. That's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> um. And wizard, your target is three, unless you have something else up your sleeve. I have two. Two victories? Yeah. Nicely done. That's great. All right, you're keeping you're keeping pay. You're just too fascinated with this rock to even let the 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 heat and 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 sun and dryness of this planet get to you. There's too much excitement going on. <laughs> exactly. One victory. Yeah. Lyra Wizard is having a little trouble. Lyra doesn't even notice that you're having trouble keeping up. <laughs> Wizard, Lyra is getting ahead of you. Hmm. You're starting to fall behind. Okay. Is there anything you can do to get yourself caught up that you can think of? Um, you didn't take your vitamins yet. <laughs> I didn't expect to be just trekking through the desert either. No. Uh, Can he fly? I suppose it would be easier for me to just levitate myself about. It's more mental All right. energy than physical. Go what is your what is your what is your what is your virtues and and training for for flying yourself? Uh, telekinesis, mind over matter, uh, psychic, quick thinking, common knowledge, basic training. Common knowledge, basic training. Quick, I don't want to use my quick thinking role for this one. Okay, I'll know, allow it. Succeed. So you're at five? Five. Is that right? I think so. It's not, I thought it was six. Six, three, four, five. I don't six. have quick thinking. It's still attempting for it. Okay, go for it. Six. 
seven. There's three ones in there. Seven victories. Wow. Nicely done. All right, you pick yourself up off the ground with the power of your mind, and you easily catch up to Lyra and, and the Rolling Rock. And <laughs> as the sun uh, begins to grow lower in the sky and the shadows start growing a little bit longer, the rock makes its way ac across the great plain that you're on and starts rolling up the side of another significant hill. Um, Wizard, you can levitate yourself right up the side of the hill if you'd like. Um, Lyra, you want to grapple yourself up there? Yep. All right, roll body. I will give you an. I will give you um, minus one to your target number for your grappling hook. Common knowledge, basic training. Sneaking and stealth, and quick, observant, autistic, and smart. I'll give you observant because you have to find a good place to put your grapple. Um, I'll give you smart, so your target is five and under. Uh, three. Three, good enough. You follow the rock as it makes its way up the hill, and it kind of loops itself over the lip of a cavern and starts making it w its way into the heart of this mountain. And the two of you follow it as it trundles down through the cave, a round number of corners, and down a slope. As you reach the bottom of the slope, you, you can see a glittering, shining hall of octonium crystals up ahead. And you make your way around a corner. The corner isn't a hard corner. There's pillars and stalactites and stalagmites that break up the image. So slowly, in, in little glimpses, this massive cavern of gorgeous blue, radiant purple, and, and ultraviolet octonium crystals, kind of like, uh, like, a, like a nebula only underground, is revealed to you. And the little ball of rock, which has gathered up a few more inches to its waistline on the way, has started rolling around, picking up loose bits of gravel and loose minerals and also um, loose bits of octonium that makes its way around until eventually um, it lands a big shining piece of ultraviolet octonium and then Lyra it rolls right up to you and stops and then it starts to shake and vibrate it starts to break itself apart and unfurls itself into a maybe three and a half foot tall Rock person. <laughs> it opens its eyes, and its eyes are glowing purple bits of octonium. And it's... He's so it's, uh, cute! <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a new pet. <laughs> <laughs> and... The uh, the rock man, um, with swirling bits of blue and green, and it's in and 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 you know sandy, brownish, tan colored minerals swirled all throughout it. Starts making its way back out of the cave now, and climbing down the mountainside. Follow him. The two of you follow. I'm following okay. him. You could stay. I'm following him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, as it reaches the bottom of the slope and makes its way out into the plain, you can see not too far in the distance in the light of the setting sun a, uh, 
a sort of much smoother, much more um, cohesive in terms of its color mountain in the distance. It's very striking. It's almost entirely blue, which means this mountain is made almost entirely out of copper minerals. And, yep, it's unlike anything you've ever seen. I like copper. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. And there are, in fact, glints of copper streaked throughout uh, the blue stone of the mountain that catch the light of the setting sun. It's, it's spectacular. Ooh, and as the little guy that you guys are talking to, um, or that following, makes its way, trundles across the, the earth um, towards this mountain, you eventually make out that there are a couple of other much, much larger, maybe eight foot tall, seven foot tall, rock people milling around at an entrance to this structure very similar to the entrance that you saw closer to the Saurian camp. And one of them um, glittering in the setting sun of planet rock made of entirely translucent stone so that you can see shining chunks of Octonium inside his body um, notices your little friend trundling in his direction, and he, it, excuse me, start marches towards the the three of you. You can hear his footsteps. He's so heavy. It's unmistakable. It's a, it's very intimidating. Okay, <laughs> stopping. Mm -hmm. Little dude can trundle on, but I stop. Okay. Well, he, he, it, the, the little dude trundles on and, and meets with the giant glittering quartz person. And it interacts with the little... I mean, they're, they're like, you know, several, several hundreds of yards away from you. So you don't feel immediately threatened. Um... But, um, but it is still, you know, something that catches your attention. It's something to be wary of. Interacts with them and interacts with the other beings that are collected out there in front of their home. And then the giant quartz rockman kind of packs the, the new young baby rockman into the, into the structure with the other aliens and starts approaching you. Stomp. 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 And is w clearly walking directly at you. Not in a big rush. Not, not in, you know, not quickly or anything, but deliberately for sure. And it stands before you. And with the power of their spirit, this Rockman will now scan your minds. Does anyone want to try and resist? Oh, no. I can talk to him. I figure, That's I true. I'm familiar with that feeling. I have a really yep. bad process. <laughs> All right. Oh, wow. Yep. All right. So you you feel very gently, almost like like a form of radiation, almost like sunlight. You feel the energy of this being's mind, which is vast and powerful, um, scanning your your tiny human brains. Uh, we have a question on the on the stream. Yes, we do have a Discord. Um, Ty and I will send you that information along with the other information just as soon as we wrap up this stream. I'll make sure that you get it, the access to the supplementary material. We're in the process of writing a 
uh, young readers novel as well. I'll make sure that you have access to that and I'll make sure that you get the discord. There is a weekly chat on discord on Tuesdays at 1230 Pacific time. Uh, you're very welcome. So, uh, and that's for anybody who's giving, it's another $10 a month or more um, perk. So you can check in with me every Tuesday um, if you'd like. And sometimes we'll get P-Mail, the artist, to come and talk. And we'll get Lee, who's our social media coordinator, to come and talk as well. So you'll get to meet the whole Jump Rangers team. And uh, hopefully we'll get some of our other patrons to come and say hi as well. Uh, well, thank you. <laughs> thank you for joining. So um, that warm glow that you feel in your minds subsides just a little bit. And Lyra, you hear in your mind uh, a gravelly voice that says, I am Quartz. Okay. And you so, can I tell, tell are the me? Earth Giver. I'm the who? You're the Earth Giver. You exactly. gave the Earth to you gave the Earth to Iggy. Iggy? Who's Iggy? <laughs> <laughs> Iggy is the newest member of our observatory. Oh, the little dude. Yes. So the little Iggy dude. Quartz and, and and the little guy's name's Iggy. Got it. Welcome to Planet Rock. You are welcome. At the Azure Mountain. Ooh. Um, uh, well, okay. <laughs> so we're here to, to figure out why the, well, we aren't here to figure this out, but we are here to, because of, well, never mind. There's lizards here <laughs> that are trying to destroy things, and we also need to give up this planet, so we need help. We we aren't part of the wizards. Wizards. <laughs> May I witness your memories? The thing you already did. Yeah, isn't that what you were doing with the warm with the warm stuff? I was reading your intentions, and I was reading your experiences disposition towards the newest member of our observatory. But I have not probed your memories and would not do so without asking. I'm not rude. Go for it. It's not my first time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Been around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I see that one observatory has already been destroyed. It's a new queen. Those rockmen have repelled the invaders before. This world has never been set foot upon by members of the Saurian species. Oh, that looks awesome. That looks great. Um, until this moment, we've always managed to frighten them off with radiation storms to confound their readings and convince them that their scans were in error. I think we thought it would always be the case. Okay, so what happened? That this worked. What, what changed? Well, they must have failed. Simple as that. And now they're here. So, as much as you may need our help. It seems as though we will need yours as well. But for now, you have brought us a new member of our observatory, and that is cause for celebration. Will you join us in the Azure Mountain? <laughs> uh, well, yes. neither do we. We are radiovores. Ha 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 ha!
We're not cannibals. Come this way. <laughs> do you require sustenance, or do you have food of your own? Uh, if you want to call it that. I have slime to ingest, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, if necessary, we can provide you with more suitable sustenance. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm game. Uh, we need... All right. Does Buster need anything? Uh, nope. Sam, thank you for asking. My systems are optimal. Sweet. Radiation hasn't made me glitchy, 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 glitchy at all. <laughs> <laughs> he says reassuringly. <laughs> <laughs> Life makes you glitchy, Buster. Life makes you glitchy. <laughs> So, uh, the three of you follow Quartz into the into the um, into the, the giant cavern of the Azure Mountain. And similar to the other mountain, it's a tiered structure. It's a lot more elaborate. There's subrooms that go off to the sides. Um, you can see up in the up in the roof that the copper reaches all the way into the sort of dome of the structure and there's glints That's everywhere for you Mikhail. what the copper it's conductive so oh. it'll be good if you if you have to electrocute everybody <laughs> <laughs> and and almost the entire structure is uh, a swirling mass of blue with what might be writing in various parts of it, you're not exactly sure. And um, as Quartz leads you, he, he opens his hands wide, and he says, this is our observatory. This is the hall from which we watch the stars and observe the rest of the galaxy at work. And walking uh, into an opening at the other end of the hall, he, he walks through a series of similar rooms, eventually into... Uh, a room that's mostly blank and doesn't have a lot of openings. He says, this will, this will suit your needs. And with that, Quartz reaches out and pulls two stony, flat surfaces out of the wall for beds. Little alcoves. He moves his hand and the stone pushes in and creates little cubbies for you. Uh, you must be parched and hungry after your journey. If you will wait here, I will attend to your needs. Okay. All right, Baymax. All right. He leaves you inside the blue room, and he makes his way back uh, into the hall and disappears from sight. And Is Sammy as the two of... What's that? Is Sammy oh, here? is Sammy here? I don't know, to tell you the truth. There's I can't hear him. Oh, I got my. There's some kids walking around the yard. That's why I was asking. Oh, I'm I'm sure there is. There's there's truck out back. I can't hear anything with my headphones on. Okay, cool. Just checking. So, um, while you guys are sitting there waiting for Quartz to come back, you can see Iggy poking. His little Iggy head. Iggy? Around Iggy. the... Yes. <laughs> like, sensing your obvious excitement at seeing Iggy, he, he kind of tromps into the room and uh, walks up to you. But he doesn't talk. They don't talk, right? They're all tele telepathic. Yes. Correct. So is Wizard hearing everything, or am I only hearing? Should I be translating? Well, Quartz was talking. Quartz was talking to you because you were the you were the uh, the Earth Giver, because you helped Iggy get born. Me? Yeah. Okay. I just kicked the pebble. <laughs> yep. 
So you, you and uh, you and you and you and Wizard sit there as Iggy comes in, and Iggy just starts examining you, looking at the both of you. And then, uh, stepping into the room, Quartz inexplicably has a giant stone platter covered in vegetables you've never seen before. But vegetables nonetheless. Are they radioactive? Nope. They're totally safe. And he has two cups, big stone cups, bowls really, full of water. You have no idea how this rockman got vegetables. You have not seen a single plant on this planet. Doesn't mean they don't exist. That's true. <laughs> so that's a mystery. And with that, um, Quartz stands before you and says, "Are I will I will allow you to eat and nourish yourselves before we discuss the path ahead." But if the means by which we have repelled these Saurians in the past is no longer going to work, and if there are those among the Saurian horde who know of our planet's treasures, then every living being on this world is in jeopardy. Yes, but and it's only this one family of, of Saurians, because they aren't sharing it with anyone. Ah. It's a secret to everybody. So it's still a secret to most of Saurians. Just spam, or whatever they're called. Hmm. Then, if we repel this one invasion, our our secret in our world will be safe. Yes. Likely. Most likely. Well, that is good news. What we will need then is the means with which to repel this invasion. We have. 20 able-bodied rockmen here at this observatory, which... It's going to take more than 20. <laughs> well, if we can master their technology, then perhaps it won't. Um, we are... I can help with that. Wait. Can you? How so? Um... Well, I can help with their ships and stuff. I, I, I really know starships pretty good. I have all 20 of them dig around in her head for a while. I can't hear you. Just have all 20 of them dig around in, in your head for a while. Right? <laughs> we, are all, we are all radio kinetics here, as well as geokinetics here at the observatory. So if we can successfully master the means by which they produce their power, it's possible we can fight back quite capably. Right, right. Um, against their invasion. Yeah, yeah, totally. So did you just invite them to dig around in your head a little bit? Uh, yeah. Is that what you were... Uh, yeah? All right. Why not? I'm autistic, I don't well, care. Good luck. <laughs> So, peering into your mind, wizard, oh my gosh. Um, yeah, mind. because you're the one who invited. He invited. Just dig around in our heads, he said. He said her head. Quartz, <laughs> Quartz, Quartz, Quartz looks at you and says, it seems that in fact you have detailed readings on the workings of Saurian technology. Um, and on the radioactive signatures. Oh, that's true. I didn't read we, it. We downloaded a bunch of stuff on the tech deck. If you can share those readings with us, then 
I believe we can train you in how to manipulate their technology with the power of your spirit. Oh, he's talking to you. <laughs> and in addition, we have other gifts that we can bestow upon you that will aid our success in the battle to come. Our, our technology here on this world is not something we typically share with outsiders. And in fact, the Saurians are coming to take that technology from us. But you have given us back one of our own. And that is a, a sign of your character and your intentions. Iggy! So. <laughs> so. Um, With this what in mind. What about my brain? We would be willing to I make each of you. Into, into. Make each of us what? Um, he's going to give each of you an amulet hmm. that will amplify one of your uh, one of your abilities. Hmm. Um. And I'm going to take just a moment to figure out what those amulets are going to be. Um, for you, wizard, you are going to receive from Quartz an, uh, an amulet that's been very deliberately carefully carved out of ultraviolet octonium. Okay. And any, any die roll you make in spirit is going to get one extra die because of that because of that amulet so he wants you to be as supercharged as possible in the fight to come um, and for you Lyra uh, because of your connection to the animals that you have with you, and because of your connection to Iggy, he is going to give you an amulet made out of green octonium, which will give you one extra die of heart on any heart roll you care to make. Thank you. I like green. <laughs> <laughs> Do not let these weapons fall into the wrong hands. Not only can they be used against you, but the discovery of this technology would bode ill for the people of Planet Rock. As friends of our people, we are entrusting you and no one else with this power. Okay. Are we the only now, other people? I mean, are you, are you Rock people the only people on this planet? We are, we are Rockman beings. We are the Rockman people, and there are observatories all across the surface of the world. Um, right, but are, is it only rock, rock people, or is there, other, is there another type of being living here? Or is there other that is a question and a mystery for another day. Hmm. We are the only native people of Planet Rock. Alright. <laughs> what did you say? And, yeah. Yep. And as you say that out loud, um, you can almost see Quartz smile at you. As <laughs> if to say yes. It is it is very specific. <laughs> I chose my words very carefully. And before we start the the well, the next game is going to be a training game. We'll get into some of the details of what you guys are learning from the Rockman people. So I think this is probably a very good place to break and do a quick postmortem. See if anybody has any thoughts or questions about where the game is going. Let me just check into our Twitch 
account and see if there's no more comments or anything like that. Um, and once we log off, Ty, I will get you all of your, I will get you all of your benefits of membership. So all of that stuff will be coming to you within the next couple of hours for sure. Um, and you'll get it through the Patreon account. Um, no comments. Do you guys have any thoughts on the game? Any questions? I, I feel like I've been here before in a dream. <laughs> <laughs> well, the good news is we are now stepping past the part of the first contact mission that you guys had managed to cover in our the previous incarnation of the Saturday morning cartoon show. So we're all caught up and it's all it's all open open skies from here. Any other comments, questions, or suggestions? No. Nothing no. Okay. Great. Oh, that looks great. That's green or blue that I'm that you've got on the top there. That's green. It's a bright green. It's very bright. In that case, this is where we're going to wrap up the Saturday morning cartoon show for today. We're going to be back next Saturday at 11 o'clock in the morning uh, Pacific time to continue the adventures of Lyra and Wizard. And once we get... Uh, Ty will be the buster. <laughs> and Ty, yeah, Ty is going to be our buster. We have a buster, which is fantastic. So there will be no transmission interruption on our Saturday morning cartoon show stream. Uh, until next, and I'll get you all the information you need for that, Tyler, um, along with no, everything it's not else. Tyler. His name's not Tyler. It's just, it's just Ty. It's just Ty. Got it. Roger that. Thank you very much for the correction. <laughs> That's a nope from Ty. Uh, I, will, I will see you guys next week. Have a wonderful week. You can always find Jump Rangers at, um, at patreon.com backslash Jump Rangers. The core book that we're playing right now is free. All of the other stuff going on with this universe is stuff you can access with just a $5 a month subscription and every other benefit that comes with membership is that with the higher level tiers is more related to, you know, getting involved in, for example, the stream here and everything else that's going on, getting involved in, in private chats and that kind of stuff. But you have access to, you know, all the content that we're creating which is to $5 a month. So please, if you haven't considered it, take a look at what we've got, see if you like the game, and come on board. And uh, with that, are you ready to sign off, Wizard? You ready to sign off, Misha? Mm -hmm. All right. Let's sign off, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>